So longleaf pine acreage bottomed out about 1995 or so at three and a half million acres. And uh, the story has taken a good turn since that time. Uh, we've gone back up to about 4.7 million acres of longleaf pine. Uh, there's just been a groundswell of interest and engagement by both, both private landowners and public agencies. Most of the longleaf pine that's been planted since that time looks something like what you see here. This stand was planted uh, about seven years ago, so it's coming into its eighth growing season. And we're gonna go look at some other stands that are a little bit further along that pathway. So this was burned about three to four weeks ago. One of the advantages to starting prescribed fire, you know, within a couple years after you plant these stands is you begin to prune up the, these lower limbs. And so you get that, that form that we like in longleaf pine of a, a straight, clear bowl and you don't have really limby trees. It's really interesting. People, for some reason, this tree grew very slowly. I can't tell you why but there is something about this tree form that just fascinates people. They call it Cousin It, um, a bottle brush, all sorts of names for it, but it really, and that's actually where we, we got our logo for the Jones Center at Itchaway. We developed a new logo about four or five years ago. So this is another agricultural field that we have planted back into longleaf pine. The first one that we looked at was about seven years old and all we had done is planted it and let it grow for seven years. What you're seeing here has had a first thinning and what we do is we come in and we take out every third row and then we choose some trees to take out in the intervening rows. One thing that's really important about this first thinning is it allows enough sunlight to reach the forest floor that these understory plants can survive and, and thrive. The next thing that we did here is we came in and cleaned up some of the timber litter after the harvest and we planted native uh, understory plants. Uh, primarily what we're looking to do here is reestablish grasses as a fuel for prescribed fire. Um, also legumes, uh, things like goat's rue, beggar weed, things like that that are great wildlife foods. They also put a lot of atmospheric nitrogen into the soil and enrich the site and help the trees grow. This is our oldest uh, agricultural field that's been planted back into longleaf pine. And this was established in 1987. We thinned this in 2004 for the first time. We took out every third row of the larger pines Again, like the site we looked at earlier, we came into the takeout rows and planted wire grass and uh, lopsided Indian grass. We also planted some legumes here. Um, that was very successful. Within a couple of years, these trees started to develop cones. We got our first crop of natural regeneration. You can see it's thriving here. So we're very pleased with that. We actually did a second thinning in 2014. And this was really one of our showcases. And um, unfortunately in January, 2017, uh, we had a tornado that impacted this site. Um, we were able to clean this up a little bit. And then uh, 18 months later, Hurricane Michael comes along and again, did a lot of damage in this stand. We were really pleased with the regeneration and the native ground cover that we had planted. And so we decided not to try to do any salvage in here. So um, this really represents our sort of furthest step with restoring longleaf pine in these old agricultural fields. I think it's safe to say we would not have thinned it this heavily as what you see now. Um, were it up to us, but uh, again, that, that was the hurricane. But it has really made this second age class of longleaf pine jump. And so we're pleased with that. Uh, we've got a little bit more hardwood coming on in here than we would like and we'll we'll deal with that in the next few years uh, but by and large we're, we're still very proud of this stand like I say it's been beaten up a bit but um, this is really starting to look like a natural longleaf pine stand rather than something that, that we planted in rows. Our approach to longleaf pine restoration differs depending on the starting condition of a given site. Our next stop focuses on stand in which we are under planting longleaf pine in an older thinned slash pine stand. Where we're standing now is a restoration project that we've been implementing here at the Jones Center since the 
uh, 1990s. Um, and behind me is a, a stand of planted slash pine that was planted in 1938. And what we're trying to do over time is convert this stand to a longleaf pine dominated stand. And so there are a couple ways that, that this can be done. One way would be come out and, and remove all of the overstory um, and plant it back with longleaf. Um, but we decided that we wanted to retain some of the benefits of the condition that this pine stand is in. So we've gone in and selectively created gaps uh, within the stand where we've replanted longleaf. And over time, we want to increase the amount of longleaf within the stand uh, so that it eventually it becomes a longleaf pine dominated stand. So initially we started out with gaps about a quarter acre in size and we planted anywhere from 600 to 700 trees per acre. Um, we did have some complications with things like drought and poor seedling survival. Um, and then more recently, we had Hurricane Michael in 2018 that removed a portion of the overstory. Um, so within this last year, we made a decision to accelerate the restoration process and we conducted a timber harvest in here a few months ago and we'll be coming back and planting trees into these larger gaps um, at the end of this year. Our final starting condition that we'll look at is in stands in which hardwood encroachment, primarily semi-deciduous oaks such as live oak, laurel oak, and water oak has occurred for various reasons. The series of four images that you see was taken from the same place, facing the same direction. You can see in the first image that there is a substantial component of hardwood stems in the stand. In the next photo, most of those were harvested and this was followed up by an herbicide treatment on re-sprouting hardwoods the next year. The site was then burned, and the next winter in early 2005, longleaf pine seedlings were planted. The final photo is from 2011, and you can see relatively natural looking patches of longleaf regeneration growing into saplings.